my first hospitalization with viral meningitis was at the age of 21, where I was attending the Sheriff's Academy, and on the second day, ended up passing out in class. And because I didn't have health insurance at the time, they gave me the option to have a friend come pick me up and take me to the hospital or take an ambulance because I couldn't afford an ambulance. My friend came and got me. And we got to the hospital. Uh, they were really concerned about my condition, so they did a spinal tap or lumbar puncture and tested it and found that I had viral meningitis. I was hospitalized for two weeks on IV antibiotics or anti antivirals and um, and uh, seemed to recover fairly well after that. Um, but later we learned that that's not actually the case. In 2009, I was having symptoms of meningitis again. And so we went into my doctor's office, general practitioner, and actually was only able to see the nurse practitioner. But after explaining my history and her looking at my symptoms, she determined that I probably had viral meningitis and needed to go to the emergency room. So we drove to the emergency room um, where they thought that I could be contagious. Maybe that I had bacterial meningitis this time because it was rare to get viral meningitis a second time. And so they quarantined me, did another uh, lumbar puncture, and, uh, and admitted me to the hospital. And after the test results came back, it came back for viral meningitis with herpes, which uh, if you have viral meningitis and herpes in your PCR testing, that uh, pretty much guarantees that you've got Mollerase meningitis or recurrent viral meningitis. And so the infectious disease doctor came in and, and told us that that's, that's what I had, recurring viral meningitis. And uh, after, a little bit after that, I had an, after I got done with all that treatment, two weeks of IV antibiotics, the um, Yeah, the doctor, uh, we, we were able to determine that between when I was 21 to 32, um, I, had, I had had a lot of uh, what we call flare-ups or recurrences of the viral meningitis. We just didn't realize that's what it was. Um, but now we did. And after uh, seeing a neurologist, um, after having some serious problems, he was able to confirm that it was called Mollerase meningitis and that it was the uh, recurring viral meningitis. Since at least my breakdown, probably beforehand a little wise, uh, on for the couple years leading up to that, I was having a regular meningitis flares, major ones where I couldn't work for at least a couple weeks. My employer at the time was actually, I uh, didn't have a sick policy. They just worked with you if you were sick. And so I was able to take off more time than would normally be allowed at any other employer uh, to deal with these flare ups. But since then, until now, my condition's been worsening. And recently uh, it's been worsening um, very quickly And I believe it's all related to the viral meningitis, the original brain injury, but then to the viral meningitis that is regularly inflaming my meninges. It's not a lot known about Mollerase meningitis. That's why I founded the Mollerase Meningitis Association. And I'm working with a bunch of great people who are all afflicted with the same disease. And uh, we're working to, uh, to fund some research because what we're finding through just a patient survey is that the literature out there stating that Mollerase meningitis is not a serious deal at all. That, you you know, you have it for a week or so and then you're better and you're better for a couple of years and, and that's essentially what it is. And that's, couldn't be further from the truth. There are some people that are like that. There's also some of us that are, that are becoming very disabled. Um, a lot of us that are 
getting secondary or comorbid diseases as well, like myself with functional neurological disorder, where my brain basically doesn't function properly. It's like a computer. You can look at the hardware, and the hardware all looks okay, but for some reason it's not working properly. The software is not working right. It's like getting a virus where your computer kind of goes haywire. And that's, that's what's happening in my brain. So my brain tries to tell my body to do things, and my body can't do it or does the wrong thing. And so because of that, I'm at the point where I'm fainting daily. Uh, sometimes it's called drop attacks, becoming paralyzed, and, uh, and have severe fatigue, um, have trouble with word finding, which is, is a big problem. And uh, I, just, I just can't rely on going anywhere. I have to stay in the house because if I go outside, there's a strong chance that I'm going to faint and, and hurt myself more.